I'd like to start the panel uh, with um, just a brief recap of, uh, of, of Indigo Sutra and why we're here and what an exciting concept it was a year ago when um, Amrita talked to me and Bappa and uh, it was hugely exciting for me to uh, have a meeting, have an event and have a meeting that brought together users of natural da indigo and farmers of natural indigo and, and have a forum or a place to ask all of our questions, ask all of our, uh, put, put down, put uh, in front all our challenges, all our successes uh, that, that we've had in this world of indigo. Um, I thought I would just start with, with three questions to the panel and then we would open it up to the floor uh, of questions for this panel. So if I could ask the first question, which is how can we get natural indigo into the hands of artisan producers? Does anybody want to start that question? How, to get, how can we get natural indigo into the hands of artisan producers? We've talked so much from this stage here. Would anybody like to um, start that? Do you have it? Hello. Yeah. I think it's a very, very important question because that's the first hurdle where we face is uh, not getting actual natural indigo. I mean, that's the biggest challenge in the market to distinguish between what is natural and what is not. Today, if you uh, see everywhere, especially in India, whole of the country is selling so many, I mean, so much of indigo. Jaipur is one place, Rajasthan, one place from where the most of the indigo, so-called natural indigo comes. But actually, if you go down deep into what they're actually dying with, it is not natural at all. So mostly, I, I feel the, or the um, end users are taken for a ride, thinking they're buying a natural indigo. So I think the most important uh, link is the farmer. I mean, ge getting uh, the farmer, and actually a farmer who is not going to uh, mix natural and synthetic indigo way that and when they actually make the cake or when they actually sell the powder. So finding that uh, link is the most important thing. Finding ethical uh, growers, uh, finding e ethical growers who would actually uh, supply genuine natural indigo. I think that, uh, that's the biggest challenge. Dominique? Yeah. Darshan? Yeah. If you could have a, a body, kind of, a, 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 whether it's a cooperative or a government body or a non-government, to certify that, you know, the certification would really help because even uh, uh, when you try to get the farmers to get in touch with the uh, artisans or the commercial producers, it's always on the demand and supply matter. And so, uh, if there's a certification that is added to this, what Papa said, I think it would help. Darshan? I, I was just going to add to what you have said, to you have said yes, um, to give an example of, on how important it, it is. I went to, uh, the Japanese friends cannot be here because they have a, a symposium uh, of the group of people who are interested in natural life this very day, so they are not here, but there, I was invited to, to collaborate to the extraction of uh, natural indigo from Strobilantes, which is the, the typical indigo plant from the southern part of Japan, Okinawa. And then we, uh, we could see the people growing it, extracting it. Then we went to Miyako Island, where they have the finest weaving of uh, textile is rami fiber. And we met the very old lady now who is the master dyer for them. And they do this fantastic yeah. dark blue, yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh, dark blue uh, indigo. And she said that she and uh, the less old lady who, who was her successor are very distressed now. Why? Because they have been doing this traditional vat dye with the same ingredients, of, uh, bought from the same producer and uh, the producer, not the farmers, but the man who actually prepares the pigment. And uh, this gentleman is also quite old, he's quite tired, and he's uh, just thinking that uh, he can save by uh, mixing 
uh, indigo, uh, synthetic indigo powder. And the dryers now, they have been distressed for two seasons because they think they have the same product and they cannot obtain this dye anymore. And they, at first, the successor, she was, she, she was responsible that it was her fault, you know. But it was not her fault, she was doing exactly the same thing, just that eventually they found that uh, the uh, uh, proportion of synthetic indigo had been blended into the product and it changes the whole vat and the whole way of uh, handling it. So that is I it, think it's a uh, really more and more. Yeah. Thank you. Tim? Uh, just on the question of certification. Certification is effective uh, when there's a lack of trust and that's all certification is designed to ameliorate that lack of trust. Um, when we thought about this conference, we thought about Bengal because there's so much handcraft here and it has such indigo growing potential. If you can put an indigo farmer together with an artisan and have trust and friendship between them, there's no need for certification. If you're an artisan dying with natural indigo and you can tell because you've been working long enough whether it's synthetic or whether it's natural and you're dealing with a farmer grower in your area, that relationship can it can be economical because you don't require a foreign, a foreign certification authority and it can be very effective because it's immediate and it's in exactly the same vicinity. Those are the kind of relationships that we're really hopeful that this conference can get rolling. Thank you. Patrick, you had a... Yes, thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity of this uh, meeting to discuss on both on certification and also on all of these uh, products of natural indigo that can be added with synthetic indigo and many of us have heard about this or, or have been in contact. Many of the artisans or dyers, uh, probably some of them use, the, use and don't know this, this product contain in, in synthetic, synthetic dyes. Sorry. Um, on my point of view, I've been in contact with all these certification bodies and <coughs> This is a question both on the, the product, the quality of product, but also on marketing and, and business. Of course, if you have already big markets and if your custom, cost, customers ask for you, ask you to, to make your product uh, register or certify, it's easier. Um, on the other hand, uh, I made some of our ingredients certified, but uh, for certification, some, most of the time you have to pay and people let, let you know that you make a good job. That's all. Um, uh, I would say that more and more uh, I have trouble for, the, for this, uh, especially because uh, when you look at the uh, products that are certified for textile, uh, you see first that, for instance, uh, if you look at the list of the God's product, you have 95 or 98 products that are synthetic and also there is no promotion of the natural dyes among these products. So uh, is there an interest for, the, for our products to be, uh, to be certified with this? Um, this is a question. So um, I was thinking, is a certification a good solution for us? Um, I was thinking on the same way that we did for the development of uh, the uh, Indigo of Guadeloupe, that maybe science could be an interest. Uh, why not uh, using analytical data just to get the proof that the Indigo used or the finished products are really from natural source? This is what we started to discuss uh, yesterday. Uh, there might be possibility just to make analytical data and think over the way to make these analytical data for the suppliers, but also for the users, and uh, I mean for the uh, people dying and designers, just to, to have the scientific proof that the product that they use is natural. So there might be different way to discuss about this. In one word, in one word is there a test for that? Can there be a test whether an 
indigo as natural or synthetic <coughs> or mix? Well, of, co of course, we started to, to, to discuss about this yesterday. Uh, I saw two different uh, possibilities, uh, and I would like to make different proposition to all this assembly. Uh, one, of, one of these would be first to work on the different uh, biosynthesis pathway of synthetic indigo and look to all these different products involved in this disease synthesis. And uh, uh, since you know that all these products can leave, can leave traces, so yesterday we were mentioning that uh, one of the synthetic uh, pathways of indigo is, uh, goes through aniline, for instance. So each time you have uh, uh, a synthetic indigo, indigo, you can find traces of aniline. So that may be a possibility to look over, uh, for instance, H HPLC analysis. Uh, you can look for byproducts of the synthesis, synthetic analysis. The second way I wanted to, to propose is that uh, maybe some of you have thoughts uh, on uh, products that can be mixed and maybe then there is a possibility to make a collection of both on uh, indigo that uh, you can consider as sure from natural source and other indigo that can be doubtful and we can make analysis and comparisons of these products just in order to see the difference of products that we can find. And um, for the last thing, I was uh, thinking to another uh, maybe simple test that could be used maybe by the manufacturers or the users. Uh, but there are different uh, different uh, reflections I need, I need to get on, on this and uh, this is an, an idea and a position. So I would like to get, we are very interested in getting your information on this. This is, yeah, we need to get that. <laughs> we need to work on this. This is a great uh, outcome. Any other points? Well, uh, I I don't know about certifications, and I, my my way of work, like I I never really you know invested much of my energy in finding like you know whether it's been certified or not, because for me uh, it's very important to understand uh, the world through my own perception, and my perception is all about my own body. I only you know trust and understand things which I can gauge, you know, personally. So I prefer, in a very primitive way, I trust people, I go, I see them, I learn about them, and if I'm convinced, if I connect with them, I work with them. And the same thing goes with my artisans. It wasn't easy. I mean, the question is like, how to uh, take indigo and give it to the artisans, how to make them work with uh, indigo. It wasn't very easy for me because my weavers cursed me for that and they hated me and they accused me that because of me their wife left them because I made them weave indigo. And it, it, it's true, it's true, it's very true. And, and I felt bad and I'm like, please, one last time, let's, let's give it a try. <laughs> and slowly. And whenever I say like, they're like, oh, no, not happening. I say, let's, let's weave white. No, no color, no color. Let's get back to white. You know, it's tolerance. I think it's all about tolerance. It's all about tolerating each other, working with each other, trusting each other, building a relationship. I think indigo, natural dye, all the handmade things, they're all tools to arrive somewhere else. This is not the objective, you know, the, just the die. But then through them, we connect to things which, which is much more deeper, which is much more real, and much more spiritual. Thank you.
I'd like to expand this to, I see the uh, Dr. Ishmael sitting there. Can we uh, ask you to take a mic? Uh, they're bringing a mic. And Jabbar. Uh, to expand this question down in, uh, on this side of the audience to these master dyers and indigo dyers. And ask the question again, how can we get natural indigo into the hands of artisan producers? And on to the next question, which is, um, we've started such a great discussion here with Patrick. What checks can we have to determine natural indigo uh, is being used versus synthetic indigo? Do you want Uh, इस बार बाय से शार्लेट सजेस्ट कर रही है जो हमारा अभी डिस्कशन का जो प्रश्न था कि कारीगरों को नेचुरल इंडिगो कैसे प्राप्त उपलब्ध हो सकता है अभी जैसे अलग-अलग सुझाव आ रहे हैं बातें हो रही है एक कोई पद्धति है या कोई जानकारी सही में है कि आप जो ले रहे हैं वो इंडिगो सच में नेचुरल इंडिगो है सिंथेटिक है या उसमें कोई मिक्स है अच्छा इसमें तो अभी जो जिसके पास whenever we we buying if we are trust on that only no we have another reason to that are uh, true the natural or not if uh, some mixing powder to the synthetic indigo it is possible and uh, the selling lot because the people think that's better. But uh, I think uh, natural indigo, former time, we looking the uh, wet, that R is 100, 100 years old. Same water, dyeing, adding water, adding indigo, adding alkaline and uh, dilute agent. So this wet slowly, slowly may be darker. If the 100 years wet is more darker than the we starting uh, wet. So, the color is available, natural, and uh, users are using to the old uh, method, and they are old and gold. So, that is possible. And another thing, if the irrigation, uh, uh, cultivation indigo, and then make indigo, that is the true with the natural. But uh, actually now, the demand of the natural is the we have the customer, the few customer, the fully natural buyers. But uh, mostly, if we looking in the area, they are wearing polyester, they are wearing uh, meal printed, naphthol printed, chemical printed. But this is the our textile community. Those are no about the natural, what the natural, what the benefit of the natural, those are our customer. Former time the customer is all. They are, uh, now they are wearing polyester, now they are wearing meal printing. That are our customer and uh, very old and old, weight available and people dying and dying, people cultivation and people taking and then dying. Mm. Uh, और किसी को उसके बारे में कोई सुझाव या कोई uh, भाग लेना हो चर्चा में I am just asking does anyone else want to add to this point as to how do you really get natural ending? So we have, uh, who else do we have here? Shamji, can we put this question to you as well from Bajodi, Shamji, Vankar? Uh, again, if we could see how. If to stick to the question of how to get natural indigo into the hands of artisans and what checks uh, would you like to see to determine natural indigo or, or are checks needed to determine uh, natural indigo is being used versus synthetic indigo. I think you heard Pankaj translate that 
And if you could say either in Kachi or English, whatever your comfortable Pankaj can translate. हमारे पास एक ही रास्ता है जहां से हम इंडिगो लेते हैं उनके ऊपर विश्वास करना है क्योंकि कोई वो देखने का मेजरमेंट नहीं है जो भी लेबोरेटरी जो भी तरीका बोलेंगे वो कारीगरों के पास होता नहीं है तो एक ही रास्ता कोई हिसाब से हम चलाते हैं और वो है विश्वास जहां से श्याम जी इज आल्सो सेइंग दैट द ओनली वे दैट वी हैव टू असर्टन वेदर वी आर गेटिंग नेचुरल इंडिगो सिंथेटिक और मिक्स इज द ट्रस्ट फैक्टर so the issue as of now for my mind what comes is that how do we set up a system where artisans or anyone who wants to buy natural indigo can come to know okay that these are the sources from which natural indigo can be bought with trust aapka koi prashna tha ha bilkul lekin jo abhi chal raha hai usme mere paas bhi koi jawab nahi hai ki how to main main kuch keh sakta Uh, वैसे तो ये बात आपकी बिल्कुल ठीक है कि ट्रस्ट होना मतलब विश्वास होना पहला मापदंड है ना लेकिन शायद जो इंडिगो बना रहे हैं ना जैसे हम लोग जो अपनी में काम कर रहे हैं हम लोगों ने एक लैब सेटअप करी है जिसमें हम नेचुरल इंडिगो की टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं पूरी और एक स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर और लोकल लोगों को ट्रेनिंग दिया है कि इंडिगो की टेस्टिंग कैसे कर सकते हैं तो आई कानपुर से एक साइंटिस्ट ने पूरा ट्रेनिंग दिया आपको जब भी इंडिगो आप खरीदेंगे आपको वो टेस्ट का रिपोर्ट साथ में जाएगा तो उससे आप भी बहुत मुश्किल नहीं है उसको पढ़ना एक्चुअली जैसे हमने टेस्टिंग ये भी कराई कि जो हम खरीद रहे हैं वो सही है कि नहीं तो कोई टेस्ट ठीक आया कोई नहीं आया तो शायद मापदंड होना तो बुरा नहीं है क्योंकि टेक्नोलॉजी है उसके लिए मुझे ऐसा लगता है सॉरी at avni what we have done is we've set up a testing lab in this village and we've trained local people to actually test the indigo whether it is synthetic or natural it's a very simple test it's nothing very complicated and what we feel is that the supplier can actually give the test report to the person who's buying it that should be a protocol because Thank you. not only we should use technology but we should yeah the trust factor is definitely the so, first step so 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 is the orders on the supplier or the onus is on the person who is buying it no i think the onus is on the supplier if i am saying that's it, the tr 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 trickiest place i guess could we pass the mic back to balchandra who is our the supplier <laughs> balchandra hello sir hello I'm Balachandran Anbargan uh, from uh, KMA Exports, Tamil Nadu. Uh, we are a natural indigo producer. Um, the buyers uh, who come to see us, we show them our indigo farm. You know, not just small farm, not just small area. We show a uh, big chunk of land where the indigo is growing. And uh, we also take them to the indigo extract where the indigo dyeing happens. And how it happens, the entire process I, I'll go through. um whether uh, the buyer is going to buy 1 kg or uh, 1000 kg doesn't matter uh, whoever comes to our facility we show them the entire process and that's how uh, we um, uh, take them through the entire process of our uh, uh, production process and the the main concept behind this is to get them uh, the trust which uh, shantanu was talking about the trust factor is very important because um it is not very easy to do the testing process and not many people know how to do the testing process and uh, now mr patrick said about the process which i did not know earlier so maybe in the future maybe it can be done but uh, so far how it was uh, done is based on the trust factor so we take them through the entire process um i i get to hear from people saying that uh, indigo extract is available in another place and uh, so on and so but Uh, when i asked them whether have you seen the indigo plant have you seen the indigo extraction process uh, they will say no so i think uh, that answers the question thank you Bala, and back to a... back to trust thank you and what what i realized is cuz you never translated charlotte i i have uh, i have one question for bala and bala as you said now the question is like as you know from batch to batch the indigo content is uh, it differs 
So is there any way we get to know? Because, I mean, as we know, like, you know, it can be 30%, it can be 40%. So how do we, I mean, when we say, I come to you, I mean, when I buy from you, then how can we get to know that this time the Indian content is higher or lower? Is there any kind of test for that? Well, maybe if, if you want to try to, to, to answer, this is what we uh, provide when on the, our development projects. So, um, as you've seen on my presentation, we did collect in natural indigo from over the world, and we made some analysis just in order to, to measure the indigo tin content inside. So, this is a basic standard control, and if necessary, we can, we can use uh, uh, stronger <coughs> methods like HPLC, but we have standard, standard con control just in order to measure. And this might be important uh, for you also, for the dyers, just to, just to know the strength of the, of the indigo that you use, of, of course. I mean for the dyers and maybe for the manufacturers, uh, because this is also um, important for your, your data, for your data sheets, for the information that you can supply to your customers. My answer to your question, um, Mr. Shantanu, um, that, um, it's an agricultural product, so there will always be a vari variable uh, uh, results. And uh, you have to check the indigo tin by giving it to the lab only. You cannot uh, check it uh, by seeing it or anything. So uh, uh, to make it a standard, uh, um, you know, uh, whether it's 35 percent or 40 percent, to make it standard, every time you get it, it should be at particular uh, level. To get that thing, we have to, uh, you know, get the entire production um, done at one place, and we have to mix it up and, uh, you know, make it into a powder, make it into a uniform format. Only then we can supply. But that is not possible practically because, as in when we are producing, we are supplying. Our entire production is not sufficient to supply to the entire market because of the availability of raw, uh, raw material is 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 very less when compared to the actual requirement. So. Uh, Uniform, making it uniform and making the indigo tin uh, uh, standard is uh, practically not possible. But, uh, Balchandra, as a, as a grower, are you looking for more acreage under indigo? Definitely. Um, our requirement is increasing year by year. Uh, we are uh, uh, producing more quantities. Uh, I mean, our, our, our uh, production is increased uh, year by year. Every year, our production is uh, continuously increasing. Uh, I believe that we have to increase our infrastructure and we have to adopt some um, scientific methods to uh, uh, you know, um, fasten the process by using microbes and bacteria like yesterday's discussion was going on. I was, I was interested in uh, focusing on that area so that uh, if the production process takes four days to get completed, if there is any methods to uh, reduce the uh, number of days uh, to hours, I think we can produce more. It will be uh, uh, possible for the uh, industrial uh, uh, you know, requirement also. We can do the industrial requirement also easily. And one quick final question. Uh, is, are there more farmers in Tamil in your area that are looking to, wanting to grow indigo on their farms? Yeah. Always. Uh, yeah, yeah, always. There, there is ne never a problem for growing indigo actually because indigo grows in a trot condition. And uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, uh, as you all know, that um, uh, it, it is a drought uh, uh, place. So uh, indigo grows very well, actually. A little bit of water is needed. That's all. So everybody has a little bit of water uh, for irrigation. So and uh, that is the only plant which can be, uh, um, you know, it's a very good cash crop for many farmers in my area. So uh, lots of people are growing it. And every year I can see more and more farmers who are interested in it. And uh, by the base, based on the indigo seeds which we supply, I can say that uh, the farmers have increased. We had a question here. What? We have a question over here. <laughs> Could we get the mic? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Anshal Jain uh, from IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, I have a little bit uh, of a different perspective. I'm uh, listening to this very interesting conversation. and. I'm looking at it from the customer's or, uh, perspective. And the problem, the, the trust and certification are both a very slippery slope. Because trust, while it is necessary, it also is giving license 
to a lot of users, dyers, printers, and brands to use the word indigo very loosely. You know, the moment you say uh, uh, on, a, on a tag or a claim that is indigo dyed, a normal customer would understand it to be naturally indigo dyed. Okay? And then you are unable to make a difference between, uh, as far as the consumer's perception is concerned, what is natural, what is synthetic, and whatever. Thank so, you. Yeah, th you've actually very well articulated my last question, oh, which is okay. what, ide what ideas the panel has, and we'll open it up after the panel have Okay, so I'll, I'll make my comment, I'll keep you. my comment for that. Uh, to the making, a, to the have for marketing of natural indigo. So thank you that's for a very well put question, and could I open that up to the panel? So would anybody like to take that uh, question first? I had a formula which I can share, Charlotte, of checking with... We'll just check with, we'll just uh, do it with the panel and first, okay. and then we'll open sure. it up to the floor. Thank you. Would anybody like to start with that? Uh, well, I do some of Maywell's marketing. Unlike certification, being truthful on a label doesn't cost you anything. So uh, there is the possibility, as we mentioned in our lecture, that you could, uh, on your label, you could say this item has been dyed with natural indigo. Uh, you could say this item has been dyed with natural indigo in an organic vat. You could say it's been dyed with natural indigo in a synthetic vat. You could, you could make it into three tiers, and you could, if you're the artisan, you could charge the client accordingly, and if you're the final seller, you could put that on your label. I, slightly disagree with the comment from the floor because blue jeans, which we all know are dyed with indigo, are all synthetic. So, and that is, a, that is the massive uh, product in the market. And I doubt that anybody would think that those are all, uh, I could be wrong, but I would doubt that everybody would think that those are all leaf indigo doing that. So, what, the context that we're dealing with is uh, artisan production, and I think uh, if we, we're all spending a tremendous amount of effort to educate the public, we probably need to just accelerate that effort ever so slightly more. Yeah, I feel uh, his point is quite quite correct for a lay person, for a consumer who wants to buy a natural ego, there's actually no way that uh, he or she, unless is again the trust trust factor, you have to know the organization who is selling it, the organization has to be, uh, I mean, true enough to, I mean, uh, disclose the way they uh, practice their indigo dyeing. Uh, it's it's the but I I really feel um, anguished at times that uh, I can talk from my experience that ever since Sutra had uh, I mean said that they would do the indigo. I've spent my last year trying to build up on this collection with natural indigo, and after coming here, I see it was so easy for so many people to just buy off synthetically dyed indigo from the market and uh, cut it up, make garments and pass it on as natural indigo. So uh, we are all standing in the same platform with natural indigo, with chemical indigo. The effort of chemical indigo is far less than the effort of natural indigo. And um, I think more awareness is what Tim said. M more awareness from uh, producers end more awareness from organizations who are selling it, like us, like Maku, like Mewa, like the Darshan Shah's Ubiva studio, where we need to educate the buyer as to what is synthetic and what is not. What is uh, actual uh, natural indigo and what is not. I think that's, the, uh, the, I mean, we should be the first torch, torch bearers. <coughs> And I just want to say one other thing with, with what Bob was saying is that um, you know there's a there's a, a little bit more transparency or maybe an evening with of the uh, of information and of information availability. While we have information overload as well, we have information availability in that uh, if you do choose to build your whole identity or market or brand on the fact that you are you, natural dyes and natural indigo there's a higher risk that that might not be uh, the out outcome if you're not um, following through and you're not uh, diligent to find who are your suppliers, who are your, um, who's doing the dyeing, going to the dye, dye house, to the dyers, 
to meet them and to the growers and to the Balachandras of the world to actually see how they're doing it, to uh, Jabbar and Dr. Ishmael, to see how your work is getting done. Then there is a chance that in everything you've built may uh, collapse around you uh, as people come to know, as the buying public becomes more and more educated. And there was another uh, point that Patrick was making too uh, about um, standardization in this whole thing. Do you want to continue that? Maybe just, just a few words. Uh, um, going after the discussion from uh, Balashander, uh, of course we all agree in here that there is uh, growing demand. And of course we, we know that the supplier uh, needs need to produce more and since the market will will increase at this time uh, the products are sold and marketed as unit unit batches so this is the first point to uh, to measure the indigo content of the unit unit batches that are put on the market but since the the market uh, will increase the customers may ask for a better standardization of the products. So this is here that we have to think over a production strategy and one of the uh, easiest way to achieve a standardization of the product is to first measure the unit batches that you produce and then as, uh, have a strategy of uh, blending the unit batches just in order to Put on, to put on the market these products with uh, always the same level of indigotin content, for instance. This is an easy strategy. But this is a question that should arise soon. <coughs> Thank you. And we had a quote, Rashmi. Rashmi had... Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, Bina at the front here, and then Jenny, and then Rashmi. So, I have a formula which I wanted to share with you all uh, that we have been doing indigo printing and dyeing for more than uh, 20 years now and we have formula that we use to identify whether it's a, a natural indigo or not and the formula is very simple you take a you, if you have a cake of indigo then you take a, a mug full of water and you put your cake in that water it will float it will not settle down. But if it's a synthetic indigo, it will settle down. That number test number two is after you dye your fiber, you take a porcelain plate and uh, you burn the fiber on the porcelain plate. If it's natural indigo, it would become a, a leave a blue mark on the porcelain white plate. If it's synthetic indigo, it would leave a brown mark. And this test has been approved by the Japanese uh, for many years now. And I'm not agreeing with that. Ishma, can you use the mic first here? Ma'am, first I'll say, I am maybe I'm not fit here because I sell almost 500 tons of synthetic indigo every month. <laughs> okay, also from China. <laughs> no, Amdavadi Amdavadi. Now, what Rashmi said, I would not agree to so fully because a part of indigo synthetic, if it is mixed in the natural, you cannot distinguish. As of now, unless you use the HLP, HPLC machine. That's too expensive. Number two, commercially, the synthetic indigo is choked much cheaper than the natural indigo. So a natural indigo supplier would be wanting to add something and supply, and nobody will know. Number three, my heart cries out sometimes when I see my indigo synthetic moving wire wire to most of the indigo natural suppliers <laughs> and, and my heart cries here but, but it, is, it, is, it is my business and I keep my eyes shut <laughs> thank you yeah. or so, not <laughs> but, but I, may, may, may I, is it my turn yet it, Charlotte hello 
One minute, one minute. Uh, one indi uh, indigo, natural. Uh, quiet. Natural indigo should cost you somewhere around uh, $20, somewhere. The synthetic indigo I sell at $6. So now this is the difference. 94% content is the na synthetic indigo. 35 to 38% is the natural indigo. Some suppliers sell you indigo saying it is either 45 to 47%. And every time if they say it is 45 to 47, take it from it cannot be natural. Because it has to be either 35, 39, 70 like uh, Patrick says, which, which I am I'm astonished also. I have to see it with him. But I have heard only 39 to be the maximum. Here in India. Here in India. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I'm sorry, agree. sorry to say this. Oh, I know. Yeah, but this is why we're here okay. and this is why we're <laughs> having this meeting and, and, and we're I, so glad that you came. <laughs> I'm not into debate with Rashmi. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Right. Only yeah, the thing is the questions are yeah. no, may I just Okay, one one help. Last last point. Arvind, we are working. Uh, I supply the natural indigo sometimes to Arvind and also the synthetic every time. And they have made some formulas and testing methods, which if I can request them and share it with most of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Could we pass the mic to Jenny? Uh, well, we have Jenny here? Or who is next on this side? May I just finish? Uh, this. <coughs> Jenny? Okay. Can I speak, please? And two. So first here, and then Jesus. Okay. Uh, will Quick you, question. Uh, will you allow me uh, to speak Hindi? Because I'm not. Uh, speak Hindi. Okay. Jaisa ki Pankaj bhai ko apse ki bazaar mein desi neel. 600 रुपए से लेकर और 24000 रुपए के भाव में मिलती है। How to trust uh, 600 रुपए, 600 रुपी और 25 4000 रुपी? Which indigo is pure? So uh, it is very difficult क्योंकि 600 रुपया में कितना ash होता है और कितना indigo नकली होता है बहुत मुश्किल होता है ढूंढना और uh, जैसा बीना uh, मैम ने बोला कि uh, indigo जो है वो plate में आ जाएगा। सिंथेटिक इंडिगो भी प्लेट में आता है तो ये कोई तरीका नहीं है कि हम इस तरीके से सिंथेटिक और दोनों okay. में फर्क मैं स्टेप बाय स्टेप ट्रांसलेट करूं हां या या तो लेट मी ट्रांसलेट द क्वेश्चन सो व्हाट मिस्टर प्रिजदेवल इज सेइंग दैट इन द मार्केट दे आर गेटिंग इंडिगो कॉस्टिंग राइट फ्रॉम ₹600 इवन अप टू ₹24000 सो हाउ कैन ही हां Twenty-four thousand, बोल रहे हैं ना? चौबीस हजार। चौबीस हजार बोल रहे हैं ना? Twenty-four thousand। जी बिल्कुल चौबीस हजार बोल रहे हैं। हाँ। So can anyone answer this? So I think this is a question for Gal Chandra. Uh, Can we I have that in the front here a question that natural indigo is anywhere from 600 to, to 24, rupees per kilo yes. to 24,000 rupees per kilo. And after you've answered, could you pass the mic to Jesus, please? Oh, you don't have a mic. Could we get a mic over here? Yeah, and uh, in relative to the testing, in relative to the testing of uh, if it's natural indigo or synthetic indigo or not, or uh, fabrics dying with natural indigo or synthetic indigo, I don't remember what department of the government uh, has developed already few testing. I received one email, two emails, uh, one about indigo, indigo, other about rubia about two, three months before, I can share it with people, with uh, one full, um, uh, very well uh, uh, done work of developing few testings for all, all this, pure, not only one. And then I find it strange because this has not been shared, I see. And then I will uh, share with anybody who is asking. This test is ready, uh, the last few months. 
Uh, on the other hand, I find that all this uh, mm, mm, talk about make available the indigo to the craftsmen. So, think. sorry, Jesus, was the first question uh, that you have a test for natural for testing natural indigo? I don't have uh, government have. So I didn't understand. And I have uh, government developed this test. I don't remember what department. And they sending me uh, to evaluate the, the things, and I evaluate, and I send them back. And it's one set of testings for uh, uh, identify natural indigo, synthetic indigo, and to identify fabrics that has been done in natural indigo, synthetic indigo. Um, yes, this is. Um, this is when, done. This when, is done. When I mention different different way of uh, checking the uh, natural indigo through. Uh, versus the synthetic indigo, oh, I mentioned two different uh, uh, two different ways, but I was thinking to the third one with a simple test, and uh, up now what I can only do is that I'm thinking over this kind of test just to make a, probably a simple test that would be easy to use uh, from the from the source to or to the the fabrics, but I need to think over and. Of course, I'm very open to exchange with anybody interested in this because we, we need to exchange in order to to, to make this the thing and to, to create this kind of test, of course. But Patrick, you understand what I say? No. Sorry? Can I but Patrick, you understand what I say? Okay, Patrick, okay, uh, so the we'll test just, has been developed we'll, already. We'll go on to the I next question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I just answer? Yes, we have. I an think. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, identifying the, um, I mean, both the, the synthetic and the uh, natural indigo. I think uh, Dr. Padma Vankar, S. Vankar, she is from IIT Kanpur. She has already published that uh, uh, a method of uh, actually estimating these two by using HPLC. <laughs> but it's not going to be costly, and all the artisans who are going to take the indigo from the supplier can always ask or demand for uh, uh, this particular certificate which they can receive in just by spending 1,000 rupees because they may be having uh, uh, indigo from different uh, things which they can mix and then keep it so that the same uh, kind of uh, quality they can maintain and uh, I'm sure that uh, unless the artisan asks for a quality, uh, they are not going to give it. I'm this sure because the uh, manufacturer is not uh, bothered about it. And so since uh, when, when they want to export it to some other country, definitely they have to take a certificate how much uh, indigo is present in that. And uh, so even for the domestic market, let them do it. Please let them do it and let them take it from the so one of these NABL uh, uh, I mean labor laboratories which are there in, the, in, in each country. So this is a test for con concentration of intercotin or this is a test for well synthetic and both, versus both. She has given test. for both, giving okay. the difference and she has okay. already uh, I mean, given the thing. And uh, one more thing I would like to say that the certification is already there by Quartz. And also uh, this indigo, indigo is uh, uh, indexed now. We have a uh, color that is being indexed. Okay. So this is something, this is something that would be very interesting yes. for this conversation. We need to, yep. And Rashmi is, is not in the audience, or Rashmi's, Rashmi had another question, uh, and she's, okay. So she had a, a, one question, but she had a second question. I just question. have to. <laughs> okay. Can I say something? Because yes. I have to rush off now. <laughs> I just have to give a word of warning to Indian Indigo people. The reputation out there is that in India you don't get real natural indigo anymore. A lot of the products, the finished products out there are fakes, not pure indigo. So if that continues to develop the reputation or the bad reputation about the uncertainty of whether your indigo is natural or not, one rotten egg will cause the whole tray to be thrown away. So let's be careful. Thank you. Very good point. Well said. We have a question. My question is for Dominic Carno, but anyone can answer. There are many experts here. Uh, if I was to start a synthetic dye brand, it's relatively easy for me to make a plan for 10 years. What colors, how, what's going to come. 
how do I add value from, to my brand for the next 10 years? It's relatively easy. But if it is a natural dye brand that I want to start, I am hampered by the fact that my color palette is limited. So how would I keep my brand fresh and exciting over the next 10 years? I thank you very much for that question because that's exactly what I have been uh, thinking. You know, I'm not a producer, so I'm very humble. Uh, I'm not uh, risking to lose money. I'm not uh, risking the lives of farmers. But uh, I genuinely uh, wish to be of help, if I can, uh, in the development of natural dyes because I find them beautiful. And like you, I feel it's a waste to be destroying our planet if we can help, uh, help it and do something else. And uh, I was thinking that as not so many people or not enough people are using natural dyes nowadays, one way is to make people want to have natural dyes to wear them and um, young people and young designers should feel like uh, producing and uh, making the, the white public want to, to wear natural dyes. And that's why I'm trying to give tools to people by publishing, um, you know, documents where you have beautiful names, you have a beautiful color, you can uh, explain how to get the color because you have the recipes and you have also the colorimetric data so you can reproduce them. Uh, I, I can do that from the documents in my country but I am sure uh, in many cultures people could do that and propose a palette of colors saying uh, these are the colors of uh, France in the 18th century or these were the colors of uh, uh, India in the 19th century. That's an inspiration. We must provide inspiration and uh, want, uh, people must want to have uh, natural dyes. And, uh, but to be sure that they are produced with natural products. Yeah, and also that uh, um, our heritage uh, for thousands of years, maybe three to four thousand years, we've known, been known to use natural dyes uh, in our part of the world. And it's there for in every museum, every book, uh, every kind of uh, archive, the kind of designs, colors, uh, sustainability, the, 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 the heritage that we have. And it's all documented. And so getting an inspiration or stories out of it Today, all the fashion and marketing is happening is all about storytelling. And uh, whether you talk about Dominique or Ruby Ghaznavi, who's been my teacher, and many others, there are many, 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 many colors that you could make out of mixing and matching and combining all the colors that are available in natural dyes. So, um, and you will be, uh, uh, you know, you would not even have that much competition because you'll be in a very small bracket. So looking at now to 10 years, you'll probably, if you start now, you'll really be on the top in 10 years. You need to believe in it. It can happen. And I think uh, to compare natural dyes and chemical dyes uh, to be like in terms of producing trendy colors, that's not a question at all because the natural dye is a way of life. I mean, it's a choice that people may make when they want to use natural dyes. So uh, they don't think about what are the fashion colors, whether it's in or out. Those questions don't, don't arise. So when you're doing a natural dye color palette, it would be for a certain select audience, I, I don't think it would be for everybody because it would come as a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. we, and we have a question in the back there. Hello, um, my name is Prachi and I'm coming at this from the other end. The conversation has so far been about how artisans can ensure a certain quality product from suppliers. But I'm a prospective natural farmer uh, thinking about growing indigo and I'm wondering how this community can, can help uh, individual small farmers like myself who are thinking about growing natural indigo or uh, natural dyes. People, uh, small farmers like ourselves uh, will typically not be into an indigo monoculture 
you know, and a lot of the problems that exist for uh, farmers making plans uh, for growing things, having a, a set market or at least some guarantee of a price at the end of, of uh, the harvest okay. applies to indigo as well. So um, how would you, you know, it, it sounds to me like the um, quality control process or the capital investment will require several years advance planning um, apart from making local kind of networks with dyers and so on. So how would you even start? Uh, uh, you know, and how would the community then uh, think about getting more growers into uh, natural uh, indigo? Uh, would it be through cooperatives? Uh, would it be through networks already established where individual farmers then join? Or you know, how would, uh, how would yeah. we go about So, a uh, good question. So, a uh, prospective farmer from West Bengal wants to start a uh, farming of indigo, cultivation of indigo. So, who can help about this? It's, it, it's a good question. Uh, it's a larger question than this panel. Okay. Here we I go. can give her a head start. Okay. <laughs> I've got seeds. I've planted indigo myself successfully, extracted. I could start from there, but others would have to take it on. Yeah, I mean, some. I, even if I had a crop, I mean, the uh, how to uh, and even talk to a dyer uh, about what my indigo tin content is. I think is one of your best. That you I have quite a network here already. You have Balchandra here that I would just cross the hall and talk to him right now. <laughs> and I would talk to Amrita who's growing yes, I and do. I would talk to, hmm? okay. And so, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah. We are, time is done, according to my stopwatch here. Uh, so time is done and I'd like to thank everybody for what a, nice, what a great full audience we had for this last panel. Um, very glad, great discussion that must continue. This is a discussion that must continue. There are so many reasons, so many uh, networks that need to be connected, reconnected, so many layers that need to be built for uh, natural indigo to take root, literally, again, and for it to become the, the blue and the dye and the color and the uh, the, mark, the everything that it has the potential of coming of becoming for both artisans, uh, for uh, farmers, for industry, for so many um, uh, the players I that are involved in natural dyes. This indigo, natural indigo, must survive. So thank you all for coming. There's an indigo auction, I think, and so there's some announcements that need to be made. Thanks very much. <laughs>